And so we have the Christmas story. It's interesting each time I read it, such a familiar story, and yet there are things that all of a sudden will pop out, a uh, new discovery. As I was reading, I realized it was the shepherds first that came and discovered the baby Jesus, and then the wise men later, but where they discovered them? In a stable, because there was no room for them in the inn. Because Christmas time is a time when families generally come together. Some families will even travel a great distance to get to wherever the rest of the family is. Or at least it'll feel like that when you're sitting on the 91 freeway, right? Just the other day, Saturday, my sister and I drove out to LAX to pick up my aunt who was coming in from Florida. Yes, there are traveling and then there's traveling for the holidays, right? But when we come together at Christmas, we come together as family and friends, we usually make room in our homes, even to overflowing sometimes. There's air mattresses and sleeping bags and fold-out couches and, at least for me, the dreaded futon. I mean, I know that's new, popular, whatever, but those things are hard, right? It's like sleeping on cement by the time you wake up in the morning. Someone inev inevitably will probably wake up with a stiff back, but we, we make room for those who are traveling to be with us. We practice hospitality with one another. And first century Palestine was no different than that. In fact, culture demanded that families make room for extended families, and those extended families could get really, really extended. So to those who would have been first hearing this story of Jesus' birth, it would have sounded strange to their ears that there was no room in the inn, that Jesus, that the Son of God was born out back, in the outback stable, and his mom had to borrow a feeding trough to make Jesus' first crib. This was not an unintended layover where you get stuck at some hub and all the hotels are all booked up and you're trying to like sleep at the airport. This was a planned census. People knew that they had to travel to different towns and Mary and Joseph were traveling to Bethlehem, Joseph's hometown. Surely if he had to travel there, then his brothers and sisters had to travel there, his mother and father, cousins. The whole tribe is going over to Bethlehem. It was a regular Jewish Christmas vacation, and they were going to have a ho-ho holiday time. All they needed to do was find room in Bethlehem. And once they found room, this whole extended family, surely they would have made room for Joseph and Mary. So why did they end up in the stable? It actually seems a little baffling. The shepherds didn't find an overflowing stable with extended family people coming to help Mary care for the child. The shepherds found a newborn baby wrapped in strips of cloth lying in a manger. A young family doing its best under dire circumstances. We could speculate that maybe Joseph didn't have any surviving family left in Bethlehem. Maybe they had moved so long ago from Bethlehem, there was no family for him to return to. And maybe there wasn't other family members who were coming. Or we could speculate that maybe because of the scandal of Mary's pregnancy, they were so ostracized from family that they weren't going to help out. We really don't know. But we do know that Mary and Joseph were left to fend for themselves. And I would imagine that they felt rather lonely. Mary and Joseph were strangers 
and no one invited them in. The people of the town of Bethlehem literally shut their doors, unknowingly shut their doors to the maker of heaven and earth. They could not make room for God in person. Yet the story of Christmas is a story of good news, of great joy for all people. Not just those who are surrounded by family or have the means to exchange gifts. Christmas is exceedingly good news because God chose to come into this world as a human. God chose to come into this world as a human through a poor couple who them themselves were lost and left out. This Christmas story that we celebrate this evening and tomorrow actually began long before the angel announced to Mary that she would be pregnant and long before the prophets of the Old Testament were telling about the coming Messiah, the Christmas story began when God was overlooking the creation, a creation that he called good, a creation that he had made out of love, but a creation that had gone astray. The Christmas story began then when God saw that it had gone astray. God had planned to come to us through his son, Jesus Christ. God planned to come through the poor and the lowly. He planned to come to those who were oppressed and outcasts. The miracle of Emmanuel, of God with us, came through a couple who had been forsaken by others, but not by God. Mary and Joseph had no status or wealth. All they had was their faith and their love to offer. God comes to us in the person of Jesus Christ just the way that we are, right here, right now. Whether we feel alone tonight or whether we are on the family futon, God is waiting to be born in our hearts. God is waiting to be born in our souls, even if we don't think we have room. Let's make room together. Let's make room for the love of God, for the light that pierces the darkness for the Prince of Peace to be born in us tonight. Let's make room for each other so that no one has to be alone and so that no one has to miss out on the miraculous ways that God comes into our lives. The shepherds discovered a baby Jesus in a stable because there was no room in the inn. The wise men came and discovered a baby Jesus in a poor area of Bethlehem. We can discover the baby Jesus. And as the wise men came and the shepherds came, they brought what they had to give gifts back to God in gratitude for the salvation that was coming. So tonight we have the opportunity to return gifts. Maybe we'll be going off to a family Christmas party later to exchange gifts. But now we have the opportunity to offer gifts to our Lord Jesus Christ as we make room in our hearts for him to be born in us tonight. Will our ushers please come forward to receive those gifts and offerings.